so as i've said uh, both of the layers are pigmented and this is the anterior pigmented myoepithelium and this is the posterior pigmented epithelium and the myoepith the processes of the anterior pigmented myoepithelium they are together collectively referred to as a dilator pupillae this one contracts with sympathetic activation and leads to an increase in the aperture size this one contracts with parasympathetic activation and leads to a decrease in the aperture size and and the point of this heavy pigmentation is the fact that this makes sure that no light enters the eyeball except through the pupil because the pigment simply absorbs it now if we talk about there there's aqueous humor and there's vitreous humor right so over here you would have the cornea this space is considered the anterior segment the one that is in front of the iris and the part that is between the iris and this is the lens this is the posterior segment so this is the ciliary body over here this is its outer surface which fuses with the sclera if it were shown it has its inner vitreous surface which faces the vitreous body because the part behind the lens is the vitreous body and it has an anterior surface which is facing the posterior segment this is the anterior segment this is the posterior segment and this is the vitreous body so i am hoping this made some sense about the ciliary body which is which is actually trans uh, triangular in cross section the ciliary body is again it's mostly muscle and the and the muscles are in three arrangements circular radial and longitudinal arrangement right and you can kind of like show it all over the place like this so over here we will also have double layered epithelium <coughs> that is continuous with the with the epithelium of the iris but not both of it will not be pigmented one will be pigmented the other will not be pigmented when we talk about the retina we say the retina has two portions the neural and the non neural portion the neural portion is facing the inside and the non neural the pigmented portion is facing the outside right and so the outside layer of layer of the epithelium is pigmented and the and the layer that is facing inside is actually non pigmented so that is how you remember this so you can kind of draw it like this right and you kind of do it like this to show it is double layered right but the thing is that the layer that is outer is the pigmented and the layer that is inner is not pigmented so it is anterior um anterior and posterior and this would then be the posterior and this would then be the end this would then be the anterior and this would be posterior and the anterior would be the non pigmented and the posterior would be the pigmented epithelium inner and outer is a easy way of saying this actually so like this i'm showing this to show that this this layer is actually pigmented now we divide the ciliary body into two parts the pars plana which is the bigger portion of it so this whole for example is the pars plana and this is the pars plicata why is this the pars plicata because the epithelium is actually making these processes known as the ciliary processes which i have not shown but i am showing now but the posterior two third portion the pars plana does not show these which is why this portion is the pars plicata and this portion is the pars plana right so that is an interesting thing and over here you sh you draw the ciliary muscles and you know the types of ciliary muscles are the longitudinal the radial and the circular the f and the function of the ciliary processes is to make the aqueous humor and also to make the ciliary zonules which are the suspensory ligaments which project from here and hold the lens so that is basically what you need to know about this now we move onwards to the choroid 
but before that talking about the lens the lens is surrounded by a lens capsule which is homogeneous the lens capsule is made up of type 11 collagen and it is also made up of sulfated gags so that is the interesting thing about the lens, ca lens capsule and there is also the subcapsular epithelium which is actually columnar epithelium interestingly the subcapsular epithelium is only on the anterior aspect so you can kind of draw it like this to show this is the subcapsular epithelium and then this is the equator right this is the equator at the equator there is a change the cells they become elongated and differentiated and they form this was the lens cells they form the lens fibers and the lens fibers they become even more elongated and they eventually lose their nuclei and the ciliary processes and they accumulate this protein which is known as and this protein which is known as crystallins and this mitotic division and this differentiation continues throughout the life and that is how the lens fibers continue to be produced so crystallins are accumulated the nucleus and the organelles are lost I'm hoping this kind of makes sense now talking about the choroid which is the last part of the vascular tunica so again from <clears throat> from the outside to the inside you start with the choroid stroma which has a lot of melanocytes in addition to the normal collagen but the important bit is the melanocytes but additionally there are also type 1 collagen and the, another important thing is that the main arteries and the veins are located in this in this layer because obviously we call it the vascular tunica for some reason then then we have the choreo capillary layer and this is where there is a plexus of uh, more than normally dilated capillaries fenestrated capillaries and this is responsible for the supply of the outer part of the retina and after this we have the brusque's membrane now the brusque's membrane is multi-layered from outside to inside let us begin my apologies so on one side we have the endothelium so first of all there is the basal lamina of the endothelium of the choreo capillaries then there is an external collagenous layer an elastic layer an internal collagenous layer and because the, the innermost layer of the retina is the pigment cell then we have the basal lamina of RPE which is retinal pigment epithelium all of these together make up the brusque's membrane you have to remember the order as well